hope I'm recording. Okay, so anyways, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to present to you a series of uh, different artists. I think I'm only, I'm only going to show you four artists. And the overall theme of the art that I'm going to show you has to deal with a, um, a genre called um, hyper-realism. And what hyper-realism is, is art that is incredibly realistic, that you can't tell that it's actually handmade. It'll look like it was mechanical or from a photograph or a camera and stuff, or actually live. Um, and so the first artist I want to share with you is an artist by the name of Chuck Close. This is his work. And the thing about Chuck Close, he established his relationship or his, um, his um, art on doing portraits of people. And the portraits are all oversized. They're really big in scale. And you could walk, you know, you could be six inches from these portraits. And what's so amazing about his work is you can see every pore, every hair, every blemish. The detail in it is just so phenomenal that you would think that it was a, blow, a blown up photograph. And his people are not necessarily like supermodels or, you know, just famous people. Um, they're everyday people that he photographs and then after he paints. And he's transitioned into then taking um, photographs of people and then creating these compositions um, where he establishes a grid. And then after he blows up the work and puts in these abstract shapes and colors in them. So at a close up you see this abstract palette but from afar you actually get to see the um, portrait of who it is, who it is I'll get to that later here's a portrait of Bill Clinton um, portrait um, of a female that he did and uh, with a bigger grid this is a concentric circle grid he did again you know portrait of somebody this is Chuck Close here, and he's actually a paraplegic. Um, he was, he's paralyzed, and the way he works is uh, the work hangs on a wall, and the wall is hydraulic, so it moves from side to side so he doesn't have to move. And um, the other thing that he does, here's a portrait to show the context in terms of the scale of his portraits and the work. I mean, his work is really oversized. And again, you would swear that these were not paintings. You would swear that they were photographs. Here's a self-portrait that he did of himself, a close-up of it. And this is the, the piece that I want you to see that I think is really important because what he does is he'll actually take a photograph and then what he'll do is he'll divide it up into a grid um, he'll draw a grid on it and then after he'll have his assistant draw a grid on the canvas and so every square is replicated by square by square so in your case if you don't trace your 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 um your poster this week you can take your board home divide it up into 10 squares even squares across 10 even squares up so you have a hundred squares and then you can draw it out square by square by square that's going to take as much time but you want to be able to draw it out accurately and to be able to get every single detail so that ultimately your board looks like a paint by number set you've got to have that much detail in there as you can see mr close does not draw on his on his on his canvases he traces he uses grids to be able to um, to establish the shapes and the values in where they go. Okay, and I would encourage you, if you don't trace, to do the same thing because I want you to pick up the minutia of the detail in it because ultimately what you're going to do is you're gonna replace the value that you see on that print and the shape and then you're gonna replicate that value on your board and you're gonna fill it in just like a paint by number set because your goal is going to be to work ultra realistically. Okay, clear? Good. Let me share the rest of the body of work with you because you'll, you'll enjoy this presentation. So the next artist I wanna share with you is an artist by the name of Richard Estes. And um, his work I find real interesting um, because he takes, um, imagery of like 
everyday mundane images. It would be the equivalent of my asking you all to go in the parking lot um, outside this building and take a photograph and then make a painting out of it. So you would literally go like click, you know, and come back in and make a photograph of it. There's no setup of lighting. There's no setup of a model. It's, it's just almost everyday common, everyday things that you see. And so in this case, here's a, you know, an image of um, the back of cars and reflection on cars. That real big statement about anything. It's just, it is what it is. Here is the interior and exterior from a subway car. Um, again, a, a very normal everyday image. Um, here's the interior of the subway with the interior of the subway um, um, platform. And again, almost real mundane sort of imagery. Nothing that you would, you know, make a statement about back of a car with a reflection and then a toy store. Now, the thing that makes him so remarkable is that these are paintings. And not only are they paintings, but these are watercolor paintings. These are made with water. Do you know the watercolors, what I'm talking about? These are. And you, again, would go up to these and you would not see the watercolor washes or anything. You would see the detail in the paintings and would swear that they were photographic uh, photographs of, the, of, of this subject. And um, it was his work that actually, it was this piece that um, I became a sort of aware of his work. This was a painting he did. Um, it's sort of icon iconographic for me, partly because um, I was living in New York City while I was in school during this time. These four phone booths were right outside of Macy's on 34th Street, so it was sort of iconic. And he had printed posters of these, so this was the poster that were on a lot of art students' walls in their dorms and stuff. Um, but the other reason why I was so enamored with him is because what I learned is that he didn't use the watercolors that are like cake watercolors, you know, that you get at Walmart and stuff. Or What he used are these incredible colors called Dr. Martin watercolor dyes. And they come in these little bottles with eyedroppers and you put them on a glass palette and the color is so incredibly saturated. If you've never, if you, if you, if you've ever played with watercolor or worked in watercolor, you haven't lived until you've, you've worked with Dr. Martin watercolor dyes. If anybody's interested, I'll be more than happy to post what they look like and where to get them. But I highly recommend playing with them because you'll get the best watercolor experience with them. He kind of opened, he, his work kind of opened that door up for me. This is another one of his pieces. And again, this is all straight watercolor. You would swear it was a photograph. The next artist is a Japanese artist that I actually found online and became really enthralled, um, mesmerized with him. Um, his name is Miyamoto. And the thing about his work, again, very realistic, very much detailed, um, and you know, just almost mundane things that, that he illustrates. Um, here's a faucet with reflections. The thing that make makes his work so special is that he is a digital artist using Adobe Illustrator. And so this is the wireframe of the piece you just saw. Here is a tape recorder that he did, and then here's the wireframe of it. And he gets so in intricately detailed with his work that it's really it's, it's hard to tell that it is an actual digital piece of art. This motorcycle blows me away. The detail that he has in it is just phenomenal. And then finally, um, a sculptor who I, I sort of found when I was in my first year of art school and actually, come on, went to a show of his. His name is Dwayne Hansen. And Dwayne Hansen um, is a sculptor. 
and everything, and he, all of his sculptures are life, li are life size. And so this piece you see is, is life size. And you can't really, you can't tell at all whether it's art or not. There's nothing that looks synthetic. Everything looks incredibly real, but everything is synthetic. There's no propping in his work. Um, they, when you, he has a show, they let you stand as close as eight foot away and you could swear that you could see them breathing because you could see the hair, the nose hairs, the arm hairs, everything. It's, it's really freakish to be able to go to a gallery and to be able to see these pieces, you know, see like a, 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 you know, a, a, a guy in shorts sitting in the middle of a gallery. Um, and again, the same idea is that he takes everyday imagery, everyday concepts, everyday people, nothing extraordinary, and makes them extraordinary just by replicating them and putting them in context to an art gallery. Again, no propping, everything is made, um, what's called encaustic. Um, he has a resin encaustic that he uses, and they're just freakishly real and freakish freakishly life-size. My favorite one is this one because typically, oops, typically with every show that he does, he'll have a security guard sculpture like in the beginning of the show and typically people will go up to ask questions and after they're sort of doing this like, hello, I'm talking to you, but it's then they realize it's actually one of his pieces. Um, but, but again, you, you just could not imagine the realisticness of this. This one popped up um, first, but I wanted to use it last because this one I find, you know, the reason why I like to end with this one has everything to do with where it is now. Um, so what it is, it's a life-size sculpture of a um, drug addict that has OD'd on, um, on using a needle, a heroin. And the background is fake, it's part of the art and, and part of the installation. It's where this piece is that blows me away. This piece is owned and is showcased at Yale University. And, you know, Yale University, which is one of the oldest Ivy League schools where if you have tons of money, you would go there and then you'd go see art and here is this drug addict, you know, junkie that you find there. And what it does is it raises a whole bunch of questions related to who it is, what it is, and where it is without having to, you know, and, and the thing is, it's a Dwayne Hansen piece, clearly. You know, it's worth a lot of money, but the fact that it's not a Dwayne Hansen piece of a beautiful male or female, you know, is totally the whole point behind his work is to really to bring that ugliness of society into places like Yale, which I find really fascinating. So I wonder if it recorded. Hold on one sec. It did not record. Oh well, okay. Um, shoot, didn't record, okay. So the reason why I showed you that is because I want you to take the approach of realism to your paintings, okay? The reason why I wanted you to trace, why I want you to trace them in have a paint by number is that what you're going to do is you're going to look at your printout when you see a gray shape you're going to take the gray shape and you're going to match that gray and that that the gray value and the shape of it and put it on so you're going to transfer you're going to make a a black and white and i need to reiterate iterate this needs to be using black to white to paint you don't have to make gray from three primary colors. Please be aware of that. I've had students in previous semesters that did their paintings and they did it with three primary colors and I had no idea how they did it, but they were able to put out. You have, all you have to do is use black white, which is why you have a big black and a big white, okay? I want you to begin these immediately, and I'll tell you why. 
because when you come back on Monday, I'm going to want you to bring your paint swatches, and we're going to evaluate them from on the floor. On Tuesday, you're going to bring in your painting 50% completed, okay? And we're going to have an in-progress check so that I can make sure that you were on the right foot and that you put in enough work. So you're going to be doing a lot of painting over the week. Um, take the paintings, take your paint with you. If you're going to, you know, spend it at home with your parents, then do it at home. But you need to do it. Please don't wait till the weekend or the Sunday that you get back from fall break to start this because it's going to be horrendous. You're going to need this time to do the work. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me? Yes. No, 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 no. Two totally separate projects. Totally separate. Okay. There's your swatch making time, church color time, and then after the, there's your painting, the portrait time. They have nothing to do with each other. Got it? Yes, sir. So these are going to burn our air and polish the gray so we can see it? Yes. You already did? Oh, yes. Right? Yeah, we did. Right. Never mind. Okay. Good. Yes, sir. I don't know if you missed this, but you said instead of doing the tracing, we could do the grid. Yes. Um, is, does that still then replace the, does that count with the Well, it's credit? too late because the deadline was today. Yeah, no, I just didn't know if that was what you were, you were getting at, so. Yeah. Instead of doing the trace, you can do a grid. If you know there's no way in hell you're going to be able to get a trace with my projector, you know, by, by Friday, take it home, make sure it's primed, take it home, and grid it out. But you, it has to be as accurate as tracing. It cannot be freehand drawing. And keep in mind, when I do the 50% check-in, I will not hesitate to go, this is a disaster, write it down, start over again, start from the beginning, this time do it right. So put some good time into this, okay? I will. I absolutely will be able to, when I look at your swatches, you're going to be amazed at I will be able to find, tell you how much time you put into this, how you worked, when you started working, the same thing with the paintings. I could read them very, very easily. Please, please start them immediately, okay? Regiment yourself. Have fun doing this. Don't make it happen at the last minute because it'll be, it will be torture for you, okay? Anything else? Yes. Yes. Made with black paint and white paint mixed together. Uh, no. 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 If you need more clarification, please post it on Facebook. I will be available to answer anything. But I will be available to you all week. I'm going to expect you to work. I will be working too. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, how much check on this is the way you back? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you've got like, what, two weeks? To do. Person. Sorry? Swatches are due on Monday. Tuesday is going to be your progress check on your team. Clear? Yes? Is there anything else we need to talk about? We're done. Have a good break. If you brought your board and want me to look at it and give you credit, come and do that now. Turn all the way.